welcome to Gomology, Fun with Outerwear. I'm Nick Johannesson, host of Gomology Podcast, and now this series on outerwear. I'm also the writer of the welldressedad.com blog. Now, I'd like to start off this series with a very, very typical piece of outerwear, and one I get a lot of questions about. Buying a vintage barber. Now, the barber I'm going to cover today is actually my favourite vintage barber, and um, it's very much the sort of typical farmer's barber. So to start going through it a bit, it's long. It covers your backside, which means that it's a bit warmer than those that only half cover it. There's a sense of purpose there. It's got plenty of full pockets. It's got the big patch pockets here, large enough for a thermal mug or a packet, packed lunch, even large enough for a paperback or two. Two of them, very handy pockets. You've got uh, a sneaky pocket here for your phone or your wallet. Also on the waterproof side, so it'll keep things dry. And it's got the two chest pockets here, lined with mole skin, which is a fabric, not the fur from a mole. Everyone has to make that joke. But quite nice when it's cold outside, just stick your hands in there and you'll be okay. Now, it does not have the classic poacher's pocket, you know, the one at the back where you can stick a pheasant or whatever you find when you're out walking, but it does have these interesting pockets here. Now, you're thinking, what's interesting about these? Well, they are utterly, utterly functional because they have a waterproof lining so that whatever you put in there will stay isolated there and not come out and destroy the lining. If you put something really nasty in there, and I'm not going to speculate what that might be, you can also just take them out when you get home and wash them, which is a pretty good idea, depending on what you pick up during your walks, of course. Now, uh, apart from that, we've got the Velcro cuffs. I don't like to see these elasticated because that does work a lot better, but they, they're okay. You have the classic corduroy collar, of course, and which is nice to put up if it gets a bit parky outside. You've got uh, the sturdy metal zip, a YKK zip, so it's uh, it's quality, and also there's a certain heft here. You know, they're made to last. Now this jacket is about 40 years old, and the zip is as good as it ever was, so uh, pretty handy. Um, once you zip it up, you can also tighten the storm flap so that there's even less chance of the driving rain and wind coming in through the front of your barber and if it's really cold and miserable you've got that storm tab up there that's a pretty decent usable jacket now of course this one which i admit i bought second hand and i just love the wear on it there's a few tiny little holes here but uh, really it's in pretty good condition now you might think could do with a real wax it could, but I don't use it in really awful conditions, and I do much prefer the worn look. Now, lots and lots of options on these. It did come with uh, the classic enamel pin up here. Some people like to take them off, put them in a drawer. Others like to have them on. I'm not fussed either way, really. But it is the only barber logo, because these predate um, when you had the barber logo on the pocket modern ones which is pretty neat really as logos go um, so not a lot of options apart from that but there's the one this one which is the button in liner which is intended to add a bit of insulation now this button's in place through the press buttons they're already in the jacket so you can just pop 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 about a dozen of them and it's in place adding some nice warmth um, it's a sort of pile um, looks a bit woolly but it's not this is very much a product of its time it um, is um, as synthetic as it gets really 100 acrylic um, disadvantage is that synthetics tend to get smellier than wool uh, advantage is you can just button it up pop it in the washing machine and it will be good as new. I would have liked to have seen a really nice wool lining made and it 
it's a very, very simple design, so it would be dead easy to make, in fact. But uh, there you go. Um, probably once I take this off now, you'll actually be able to hear the synthetic crackling from it. It is that, that synthetic. Yes, don't really use that very often. I prefer to put a thick wool sweater on underneath, which both works better. It doesn't have the synthetic crackle and um, just feels a bit nicer. Now, that's the border, but I've got something here, which is sort of the big brother for the border. And that is this one. Now, I know just what you're going to say. You're going to say, hang on, Nick. That's another border, but it sort of is and it isn't because design wise, yes, it is the border. These are both the same size, same color, um, all the same features, but the border has slightly lighter weight waxed cotton and the Northumbria, which is this one, has a wool lining. It's not 100% wool, Again, child of its times, it um, has a content of acrylic in it, which I don't like to see wool, but I mean, the mi wool mix does last longer, it is a lot stronger, so it's good. Uh, and this jacket has also got a fair amount of mileage on it, it's got holes <laughs> pretty much in the same places as the border, and the wool lining is still as good as ever, really. A few bit of pilling here and there, but it's good. So, the same jacket just a bit, uh, a bit more rugged. You can't really feel it when you're wearing it, but it is that bit solid, more solid. Um, a little bit rarer, I think. Although then neither of them are uncommon. If you go on eBay, you'll find borders and Northumbrias are plenty. So um, and they're, they're cheap. Um, I did mention waxing. Now, if you do want to have a go re-waxing, what you need is pot of the barber thorn proof dressing which uh, is the sort of wax that these old classic jackets were waxed in originally um, about 10 pounds for a box so not a huge expense in uh, the wax itself uh, the real expense for you is the time it takes to actually set things up do the job clean up uh, basically learn the process which um, it's, it's fairly straightforward but it is a bit tricky at least the first time you do it you have to make sure that the wax is kept warm enough so that it flows well that the jacket is warm enough that it the wax doesn't sort of solidify the moment it hits it it becomes very obvious because you get big globs and it doesn't flow out on it now all this involves uh, electric fans uh, hair dryers it's a bit involved and can potentially be messy and smelly so uh, for the cost it's worth trying at least once um, apart from that there are people who do it reasonably priced for you and it can be worth investigating them if you're keen to have your jacket waxed and part of the joy of an old barber is that it basically can last pretty much forever with a little care or you can leave it like this and it just looks like you've been uh, you've been outside doing manly stuff all day now, I think that's about it. Oh, one more thing. Now, there is an unfortunate aspect I've discovered about wax jackets, and that is they tend to be smelly. Even ones that haven't been used too much or fairly new can be smelly. So there's a gradient here. Um, gradient from marginally smelly to the pigs have probably been sleeping on it. And uh, it is a good idea when buying a vintage one, if you can smell it first. Because if you don't, you can be in for a rude surprise. I've had jackets arrive where I regretted tearing up the plastic they were wrapped in because they smelled that bad. Um, and some people will say, well, you could hang it outside, a bit of fresh air and a bit of sunshine, it will sort itself out. You could uh, put it in the freezer, bacteria's freeze or you could spray it with something or other. Uh, vodka has been suggested. I have a suspicion that neat vodka might actually work, but uh, I haven't been there yet. Problem with a lot of the old wives' tales is that they don't actually work for something that really, really stinks. 
My suggestion is to take a bucket of lukewarm water and use some wool, wool detergent in it. Uh, wool detergent because that's quite mild, uh, lukewarm or even less lukewarm because you don't want the jacket to shrink. You could put it in the washing machine. The problem there is that you, unless you know your machine really well and are willing to risk it, uh, you don't really know what's going to happen in there. I've had clothes torn apart when I wanted to give them a gentle wash and so forth. And also if it's a lot of waxy or dirt, you do risk it sort of coating the washing machine. Your mileage might vary, as they say. So putting in a bucket of lukewarm water with some wool detergent is low risk and you can also monitor carefully what's going on. I've got an article about this on welldressdad.com, so I'll put the link to that further down. But you can save an old jacket and uh, if it comes out and all the wax is gone, I mean, worst case, you use a whole pot of wax and bring it back to new, if that's what you want to do. But they do look pretty awesome with all the wax removed, I have to admit. So there you go. That's my advice on buying a vintage barber. There's plenty on Etsy, eBay, vintage dealers. Don't pay too much for them, but it's worth getting a good one and preferably one that doesn't smell too much. Beware that also that the sizing, they were meant to be large. This is um, actually a size smaller than I normally use and I have room for a massive great jumper underneath. So if you're wanting something a bit more modern fitting, you want to probably go down two sizes. If you want something that fits like you intended, get your proper size and so forth. So uh, thanks a lot. And um, what outerwear will I feature next week? Well, wait and see. Bye bye for now.